Okay, guys, let's look at the verse for today. Everybody with me? Everybody with me? Okay. So then what? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. We talked about that the other day. And here's the last one we did. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. And your faith is in vain. Amen. We talked about that too. The importance of the resurrection of Jesus. Today's verse, short and sweet. Some of you will recognize this. It's my wife's favorite verse. It's in the book of Philippians. Do you know it? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. 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 Let me, let's, let's talk about the background of this verse a little bit. Do you remember anything about Philippi? Okay, just a minute. Go, go ahead, Thomas. Yes, 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 he was. He was in Rome in jail at the time. That's a good, good observation, which meant he wasn't really in easy circumstances, was he? He's yeah. pretty, okay, what do you remember coming in? Oh, yes, but please do that before class starts. I'd rather you not disrupt class by having to leave, okay? Try to remember to take care of all these things before class starts, guys. Um, yeah, yeah, all right. So anybody remember anything else about Philippi? Yes. yes, he started a church there. Remember anything else about it? It was on his second missionary journey. He and Silas. Uh, they were singing songs. Around with, with the the, the chain broke, and the good. Very good, Zach. Very good, Zach. Yeah, there's a song about it. Yeah, yeah. Let's thank you. The uh, they went to Philippi. The Holy Spirit had told them in a dream that there was a man that when they were in Troas said, Come over to Philippi and help us. Come over to Macedonia. Philippi was a city in Macedonia, and so they went over there. Well, one of the things that happened while they were there is this slave girl. The slave girl uh, had owners that were making money from her because she was demonized. There was a demon working through her, like telling people's fortunes and telling people secrets and stuff like that, that the demon knew. And so, so they were using her. People would pay these guys money to get information from her. Abby, you're with me, right? Okay. All right. And and so they would they would make money off this girl. But she was going around following Paul and Silas, and she was the demon in her was saying, These men represent the most high God. They, they're, they're, they're telling you about Jesus. Well, Paul didn't want that kind of testimony from a demon because he knew demons would tell the truth a little bit, and then they would lie a lot and deceive people. So he's he, he well, you know what he did? You with me, Thomas? You know what he did? He cast a demon out of the girl. So the demon left the girl, and guess what her owners thought about that? They were, they were furious. Yes. They were making money from this girl, that demon, and, and now they can't. So they simply turned Paul and Barnabas over to the, Paul and Silas, over to the authorities, and they beat them up, and then they threw them into a jail. And do you remember what happened in that jail? Yep, that's what you were talking about a while ago. Yep, they they were they were seen in the middle of the night. Now, guys, try to picture this. What do you think those jails were like back then? Pretty much dirt. I mean, they they they, they yeah. It was no, it was it was like dirt floor. They were they were they were nasty, disgusting, filthy places. They didn't have bathrooms a lot of times. They just they just had to use a bathroom in the corner. It was smelly. It was stinky. There were bugs and flies and. And and some of the guys would throw up, and that was in there, and you know, all junk. It's awful, dark, horrible, messy, smelly dungeon. And they had their hands and feet in stocks. You know what that means? They couldn't move their hands and feet. Now, you remember what Paul and Silas were doing again, middle of the night, singing praises to God. Guys, that couldn't have been easy for them. They were in a strange city with strange people they'd never met before. They'd been beaten up. Nobody seemed to appreciate them. They were in jail, and they're praising God anyway. Yeah, they, they they could. At that at this point, I don't they don't read that they were tortured, except that their hands and feet were bound. So, so it was so they're praising the Lord. Now, what did God do when they're praising the Lord? Um, they decided to break the chains. Yeah, He sent an earthquake, and the earthquake broke all their chains. And you know what the Philippian jailer started to do? You know why he's going to kill himself? 
yeah, he knew that the Roman authorities would kill him for, for losing the prisoners. And he knew the way they would kill him would be a lot more painful than the way he would kill himself. So he was going to fall on his sword and end his life as quickly as he could. Uh, we don't know exactly what they did. I know sometimes when prisoners escaped, they would actually take the clothes of the man that was responsible for them and they would bind him to a post and they would start a fire with his own clothes and burn him alive. They did that to some of these Roman soldiers. Yeah, it's awful. So it was horrible, guys, a rough, rough time to live. Now, listen. That jailer was about to kill himself. You remember what Paul did? That's right. He said, he said, he said, you don't have to kill yourself. We're all here. Just stop. And you know what that jailer said to Paul? What must I do to be saved? And you know what Paul said back to him? Come on in. You know what Paul said back to him? That's what he said. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. So that Philippian jailer was saved. And his family, such as Jesus also, and they were baptized. Now listen, Paul wrote this to that church. He was he was miserable in that situation, but he praised God anyway. That could have been that was an awful situation, but he praised God anyway. And God and any writes to you, inspired by the Holy Spirit, you need to learn to rejoice in the Lord always, 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 always. Sometimes it's hard, guys. Life is not always easy. Sometimes you're crying real tears and you're hurting. It may be because of relationship problems. It may be because you're feeling emotionally overwhelmed. It may be because you're physically sick. You know what you're supposed to do then? Just keep on rejoicing in the Lord. He said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now listen to me. Sometimes circumstances make me very unhappy. You with me? I'm not happy. When I had shingles, and they're about, about to get well now, but I was not happy with my shingles. I was hurting. <laughs> but did I rejoice in the Lord? Yes, I did. I said, Lord, you got a purpose in this. I'm just going to rejoice in you. Don't forget, there's a difference in joy and happiness. Happiness, listen to me, don't, don't, don't forget this. Happiness is being content with your circumstances. There are many times I'm not happy. There are many times you're not happy. Joy is being content with who? The Lord. And there's never a time not to be content with Him. So you can be joyful in the Lord when there are tears streaming down your face. Got me? So that's why Paul said, rejoice in Him. How often? Always, and again, I say rejoice. You know why I said it a second time? Because it's God's way. It's God's way of underlining. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let's memorize this real quickly. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. That's my wife's favorite verse, by the way. She used to have it on our outgoing message on her phone. Really. Why? Really? I've forgotten that. Anyway, that's that. Uh, he loves it. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Okay? Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Amen. You guys got it. Okay. Great verse. All right. Anything you want to mention before I pray? Safe trip. Take it off. Okay. Early. Yeah. Now I've forgotten where you're going. Laura, okay. Well, we'll be praying for you. Yeah. You're getting we're going to pray for a safe trip too. Okay, okay. Timberly, get your hand up. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Big grief. How'd you do that? Oh, oh gotta be careful when you're cutting something like that. So well, that's a good decision. <laughs> yeah, you gotta practice doing it the right way. Be careful. It's so easy to cut yourself or something like that. All right, so let's see. Olivia's traveling. Zach's traveling. Emily's got a finger cut. And yes, that's for your grandmother. And Thomas? Yeah. Your family, no, sir. No, family, no. My uncle, I think he's starting to get slowly better. Okay. Um, they got him to walk for like 30 seconds. And Oh, um, bless his heart. Starting, he's okay. slowly getting better. Okay, all right. Well, we'll probably keep praying for him. Olivia? He's on the way to the right. Shelby is. Mm -hmm. sure. okay. Why is this a big week for Florida? Mm -hmm. Is it, is it going to be where that hurricane went through? There is, might be a hurricane coming. Right. Uh, the, the hurricane's been through Florida. 
but it may not have messed up where you're going. You know, I don't know. Maybe may the hurricane did some damage. Okay. Are you ready to pray then? Ready to pray? All right. Wait a minute. I'm in, Abby, you with us? Okay. All right. Let's. Kimberly, you with us? Get ready to pray? Okay. Yeah, it went through. All right. Father, thank you so much for this time we have together. Thank you so much for this incredible verse. Thank you for the circumstances and reminding us that even those horrible circumstances, Paul knew how to rejoice. And you inspired him to write that down for us so that we could have this verse as part of our lives. Lord, I pray you'd help all of us, these kids and me, to remember when things are difficult, when relationship problems come into our lives, when health problems come into our lives, when money problems come into our lives, uh, when overwhelming emotional problems come into our lives. Help us, Lord, to remember to rejoice in you. Lord, you know and we know that we're not always happy with our circumstances. Because our circumstances are sometimes very painful. But, Lord, we can be full of joy in you, even in the midst of difficult times. Teach us how to do that, because we know that your joy brings us strength. Thank you for teaching us this. Thank you for your word. Pray, Lord, that you'd help these kids today to learn what you want them to learn, to be ready for the test. And I pray that they will uh, grow stronger in you and grow stronger in their ability to do math. So use this time for your glory in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I want to pray also for these requests. I pray for Olivia's trip. I pray to keep them safe and give them a good trip. And Zach, too, give them a, and Will, give them a safe, good trip uh, this this weekend. And, Lord, I pray for uh, Kimberly. Girls, we'll be talking in prayer. Pray for Kimberly and her uh, grandmother and her finger, Lord. I pray her finger would heal well and help her to be safe from now on. But uh, bless her grandmother. You know what's going on there. Lord, I pray for... Uh, Thomas's family and and Noah's family, especially his uncle. I pray you give him strength and grace, and healing and help. Give the doctor skill and wisdom. What am I leaving out, guys? Anything? Is that it? Shelby. Yes, Lord, I pray for Shelby. You keep her safe on her trip as well. Anything else? All right, Lord, help us, please, to bring you glory and honor and stay in this battle you placed us in. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, Let's see. You can take one bell and pass one of those guys. Pass them out. Don't pass them out. There'll be some left over. Just give the leftovers back to me, please. Everybody got one? Thank you. Any other leftovers? Oh, yeah, sure. Everybody else get one. You have some leftovers? Thank you, Kimberly. Is that all the leftovers? Okay. All right. Let's see how many of these we can get through today. You've got to test next time over this stuff. This stuff right here. This is all you really need to study for the test is that handout. Do you need to turn it back into me? No. no. You remember how I suggested you do this? It's okay with me if you do it a different way. You remember how I suggested you do it? Write it on something else. And that way you can look at those problems and see if you really know how to work them. Guys, remember, listen now. There's a big difference in watching me do a problem like this and say, yeah, I know, yeah, I can, that's the right thing what he's doing. But you being able to do it is different. You got to be able to do it. Okay? Don't just watch me do it. Yes, sir. So if you want to, you know, this is just a recommendation. I could, but it takes a lot of time. I don't do that because it takes a lot of time. Uh, I know a lot of teachers do it, but I want to cover as much material as I can. I only get you less than two hours a week, really. And so I and, and, I, and I feel like it's really important for me to work on your spiritual life as well. So I've got to kind of get it all fit in. So I don't do that because of time mainly. So. And some people are really, really uncomfortable with that, too. Some people like you would be fine to do it, but some people are real uncomfortable with it. All right. We've got to divide here. You've got to remember how to. Oh, by the way, another thing. I thought you might be going to say this, Thomas. Another thing you can do, and I strongly recommend it, is I try every time, unless there's a technical glitch or something, by the end of the day, sometimes, again, it may take me a, a little bit in the next day, to get these videos uploaded to YouTube. You should know how to find these videos now. 
you can watch this video and I'll have it on there. They'll have the date, but I'll also say test review on the, on the title. And you can start this thing up and say, and you can zoom in, you know, use your fingers to zoom in so you can read what's on the board. That's pretty fuzzy, even with your real eyes. <laughs> but anyway, you can, you can see what the problem is here. And, and then you can pause it and see if you can do this problem yourself what, and do it on a piece of paper and then watch me finish it and see if you did it right. That's another thing you can do. Several ways you can study for the test. 25 will not go into seven, but it will go into 76. How many times? Three. Very good. Now what do you do? Multiply. Multiply. 75. 75. And then what do you do? That's right. And then what do you do? You bring it up seven. Now that's the cycle. Every time you do long division, that's the cycle. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. And then you start it all over again, except, yeah, except this time it's going to be a zero because 17 is too small. And you got a remainder of 17, which you can write like this. Or you could write 30, 17, over 25. 17 over 25. That remainder over that divisor, you make a fraction out of it. Okay? I don't care unless it tells you to write it like a fraction. If I tell you what I will normally do, if you write it like this and it says write it like a fraction, I'll say, well, at least I got the division right. I'll just take off one point usually. So I, don't, I don't count much if you get if you get basically. But if they if you don't do exactly what they tell you, I might count off at least. What do you do here? It's multiply. It's multiply. Yeah, for instance, means multiply, and it's twelve hundred, right? Yep, twelve hundred. That's exactly what you can do. That's fine. Uh, and then to test yourself, once you get to 1200, you might say, I'm going to divide that by 30 and see if I really get 40. 30 goes to not going to 120. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 40. So, you know, just check yourself. Make sure you get a new eraser out. Make sure you're doing it right. Easy to make careless mistakes. A plus 12 equals 31. You know what to do? Sub subtract 12. Yeah, and you get A equals 19. Is that right? Yeah. You could, you could do it on the side of the deal if you wanted to. But, but, but. All right, what do you do here? Add 24. Yeah, and you get 39. What are you going to do here? Divide by 15. So once again, you'll just on the side go 15 into 18. One time. Two times, end of problem, 12. Yeah. yeah. Is it right? Listen, guys, I can make mistakes up here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can make mistakes easily. I mean, we all do. So it's all right if you catch me at one. All right. What do you do here? Divide by 14. Yeah. Yeah, now I'm not going to do that right now for time's sake, but we may come back to it later. Now, here's the, for me, I think for you, this is the most tricky thing, because when you see that minus sign, you find yourself wanting to add to undo that. But you don't add 20 and 51. You're going to actually subtract 20 from 51. Yeah. So if the variable is here and you're subtracting it. It's the same as if it were on the other side and you were subtracting the 20. You'll learn more about that in algebra. You could add G to both sides and then subtract 20 from both sides. So it's 31 is the answer. Now, you might be able to kind of see that just by looking at it. That's fine. If you can do that, that's fine. But if you add 20 and 51, you get 71, and your brain on immediately say, wait a minute, that can't be right. 51 minus 71. 71 is bigger than 51. I can't get 20 out of it. So yeah, that's the tricky one. Least to greatest. Zero, negative one, negative two, negative three. What's the smallest number up there? What's the smallest number of this in this group right here? Neg negative three. And the next one? Uh -huh. Yeah. If you need to, that's exactly right. You can draw a line, a, a number line. Here's zero. Here's negative one. Here's negative two. Here's negative three. That's the smallest. Next, next, next. Yeah. It's just going backwards. And then the one underneath it. We did this last time, but there's another one on the test, sort of like this this time, I think. Um, what's the smallest number you see here in this, this group right here? Negative, there's a negative eight and a negative seven. Negative eight. And then? Seven. And then? Four. Not yet. Zero. Zero. If you might, you might want to make sure you're crossing them off, as you, if, there, if, there, if there are a lot of them. And then what? 
one third and then what seven and then eight there you go okay be careful it's easy to overlook one so if you do just look at it again double check yourself oh yeah i'll, I'll look at negative eight i need to put that down there first so there you go Well, if five and two is greater than the sum of two, five and two, and you're supposed to just write that down. Now, now, uh, are y'all paying attention to me? Some of you are not following instructions on the test. You'll do something it didn't say to do. It says, write this down. Have we gotten to it yet? No, yeah. we already did that one. We did that one. This one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me let me tell you what that means. Thank you. Thank you, Camelia. Please get my attention like Camellia did. Anytime I go and pass one, you say, wait, whoa, 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 I missed that one. Do exactly what Camellia did. Get my attention. Yeah, and I'll go back and look at it again. What does it mean when you have a number written right beside a variable? Oh, yeah, but what does it mean? Forget this. For, yeah, 14E means 14 times. I'm going to use an X this time. E, like that. It means you're multiplying. Usually we don't use an X because it looks too much like a variable. You could use a raised dot for multiplication, but we don't do that either. We just write the number by the variable, and that means you multiply. Now, the question is, how do you undo multiplication? You divide. So you divide this by 14, and it, it undoes it and leaves an E. But that means you have to divide this by 14 also. So I will go ahead and finish this. 14 into 420. Do you know how many times 14 goes into 42? All right, let's try three. Three times four is 12. Three times one is three and one is four. Yes. Now, you remember they've got a zero over here, so you have to go one more step, and you get 30. Now, 30 is the answer. You still with me, Camellia? 30 is the answer. 30 is E. That's right. Now, guys, what do I say you should do at this point before we go to the next one? Yeah. See if it makes sense. 30 times 14, does that give you 420? So put 14 and multiply it by 30. And yes, it gave me 420. It is 30. So I, I got it, but I had to divide to get it. Yeah, it's always good to check your work. Always good to check your work. Always good to check your work. It's easy to make careless mistakes. So you, to, to, to undo multiplication, you divide. And you get 30, and that's the answer. So you're done, but I suggest you, just in case you made a careless mistake, you multiply that where the E is and multiply it times 14. And if it gives you four and twenty, you got it. Isn't this like pre-algebra? It is. It is. We're doing a lot of pre-algebra stuff at here. We are. Some of you who are pretty good with math, I'm not suggesting you do it, but some of you who are pretty good with math might think about even skipping pre-algebra as we're doing this. But but there's some things in pre-algebra that might be worth talking about. Some of you, when we finish this, you could probably do algebra. What? I don't know. You'd have to talk to Miss Melissa about it. I'm not I'm not highly recommending it. It depends on how good you are. If you're really an excellent student and you're making really top grades in here and you really understand it, then you might you might be able to. Uh, they'd probably talk to me about that and see how your grades are and everything. What I think. Okay. Uh, we already did that one. Yeah. And oh, this, all right, stay with me. The product of five and two. How do you write that? Five dot two. Five two. Or you could write this, right? Yeah, or you could use a little X, but I don't recommend it because it reminds us of variables. Product of five times two uh, is greater than. How do you write that? Two. Uh huh. And then, and then the sum of There you go. Sum always means add. Product. Product always means multiply. Yeah. Is greater than looks like this. If it had said is less than, it would have looked like this. You with me? Are we clear? Okay. And what the, on the test? If it says use digits and other symbols to write, if all they say is write it, then all you have to do is what we did right there. We wrote it. You don't have to solve it. Yeah. Now it may ask you to solve it. And if you write it and put it down on your paper, and I can see it, and you go ahead and solve it. I certainly wouldn't penalize you if all that's for writing. You just did something extra. But, you know, you could say, well, that's two times five is 10. 
and that's greater than five, two plus five, which is seven. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, but that's okay. So on a test? Yeah. So you. Uh, you mean on that? On, a, on, a, on an earlier test? Or, oh, not on a test. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. yeah. That's okay. Go ahead, Zach. You're trying to say something too. Yeah, but since it says Satan's gift, it will give you no time to give you the answers already. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. They just want to make sure you can translate English into math and math into English. That's the main thing. Use digits. Right. So that would 20, be 25. with a comma. That's 25 million. So that would be 026. Wait a minute. Careful right here. 206,000. 206,000. Careful. 206,000. 206. There's 206,000. 40, how are you going to write that? Zero, four, zero. Yeah. So this is the thousands place. This is the millions place. 25 million, 206 thousands, and then 40. Okay. All right. What's the sum of 607? 607 sum means what? Add 607 and... 2,393. 2,393. Is that right? Did I write that right? 607, 2,393. And you're adding, let's be careful, don't make a careless mistake. And that would be. There you go. Very good. Very good, very good, very good. Very good. Don't forget to carry your ones when you add those things. Uh -huh, there you go. It's all the common factors of 12 and 20. All right. Let's. One, two, three, four. Not tied. That's it. One in itself will always be a factor, and these are going to, if they're even, two will be a factor. All right, 20. One, two, three, no, no. Four. four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 um, one, two, two, four, uh, six. Okay, that's it. One, two, and four. The greatest common factor. Right? Yeah. Greatest common factor of 20 and 24 and 40. Now, guys, there, there's more than one way to do this. And I've taught you this before. You can just think it through. You can say, well, well. 24 won't go into 40, so that won't work. 12 goes into 24. That's the next biggest number to go into 24, but it won't go into 40. 8 goes into 24, and it does go into 40. You see what I'm doing here? So I'm just I'm just using different numbers, and 8 works. Now, would 6 work? No, it goes into 24, but not 40. Would 4 work? Yes. Would 2 work? Yes, but 2 and 4 are not big enough. They want, they want the greatest common factor. All right, now, everybody still with me? All right, let me show you a systematic way if the numbers get kind of messy and you have trouble thinking like that. This is good, nothing wrong with this, but you can, you can use a factor tree. 24 is two times 12. 12 is two times six. Six is two times three. And that's completely factored. 40, I'm gonna do a factor tree. Four times 10, four is two times two. 10 is 2 times 5. It's completely factored. Now I'm going to find all the common factors. 2, another 2, another 2, not a 3, and not a 5. They're not common. So 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. That's it. That's one. That's another way you can do it. If the numbers get very big, that's, that's easier than just trying to guess. But when they're not too big, you can just guess like we did the first time. That's fine. Nothing wrong with guessing. You're just looking for the biggest number that will go into both of them. That's eight. All right.
Mr. All the common factors are 30 and 40 on the group. Uh, okay. Let's, let's just do 30. Uh, I'm tempted to do a factor tree again, but we won't. We'll do one, two, three. How about four? No. Five? Yes. Six? Yes. Seven? Eight? Nine? Ten? Yeah. Eleven? Twelve? 13, 14, 15, there you go. So you, say, you have to go up to a lot of numbers here when you just trial and error like this. It works. All right, how about 40? Um, One, two, three? No, no. No. Four, five, six, no. seven, yes. eight, yeah. nine, Nine. Ten. Yeah. 10, 11, no. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. <laughs> all right. All right. What's the greatest common factor? Oh, wait, wait we, didn't, we didn't find all the common factors, did we? Common factors are one, two. No, four's not over here. Okay. Yeah. Six is not over there. Five, thank you. And ten. Yeah. One, two, five, and ten. And the greatest common factor is ten. ten. Okay. There you go. That's the way you do it. Now the reason I put this on here is there's not really a question for you, but I want you to remember this is called a line. No, no, it's not a segment. Because there's an arrow on both ends. It's just a line. It's called a line. But these dots on it, these points on it, give it a name, AB. This is line AB or line BA. You could call it either one. You'll be asked to do that on the test. They'll give you a line or a line segment or array, and you'll have to tell what it is. So this is the answer right here. It's already there. Got it? That's a line. If it's got an arrows on both ends, it's a line. This is a ray because it's, it doesn't have an arrow here. It starts at A and it goes all the way through B and keeps going. So it's called ray AB. It's not ray BA. It's ray AB. It starts with where the line starts at A. Ray AB. Sometimes they'll use this little symbol right here. That's a ray. Got it? Don't forget it. Now this, Thomas, is a segment. It ends on both A and B. It doesn't keep going. It's called a line segment. Line segment. Yes. You need who? Okay. Everybody with me here? Okay. Why don't you just get up, Camille, so she can get out? It's kind of hard to get out of there. Okay, guys, stay with me here. So we got uh, this segment. Draw two perpendicular lines. What does perpendicular? It's testing you. Do you know what perpendicular means? <laughs> are these perpendicular lines? No. What are they? They're logical. What do you call these things? <laughs> well, they're horizontal, but they're parallel. That's what I'm looking for. Perpendicular. Some of you were saying this earlier. Right. Yeah. And they cross at right angles. Remember? Right angles. They're not perpendicular if they don't cross at right angles. Perpendicular. How many degrees right here? 90 degrees. They cross at 90 degree angle. Can you remember that? That's what perpendicular means. Parallel, they never cross. Uh -huh. So this is parallel. This is perpendicular. Bleak means they cross each other, but not at right angles. That's what you call it oblique. It's a good way to remember it. That's good, Timberly. Did everybody hear what she said? The word parallel has two L's in it. That it means they're parallel. <laughs> so that's what parallel means. That's a good way to remember it. It's good. I like that. All right. What fraction of this circle is not shaded? Yeah. How many segments are there? Yeah, the five segments all together, and three of them are not shaded. So it's three fifths. 
What percent? You know how to change that to a percent? 40. You have to think of the whole thing as 100%. So if each one of these is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, each one of them is 20%. So each one of these is 20%. And so 20, 40, 60% is not shaded. Yep. There you go. The truth is, you can also find that out once you get the three fifths. You can divide three by five and you'll get 0 0.60, which means 60%, really. We can talk about that later. What well, fraction of this circle is shaded? How many parts are there? Eight. Yeah, eight of them, three of them are not sh are, are shaded, so it's three eighths, right? Three eighths. What well, fraction is not shaded? Five eighths. Yeah, the word not means you're looking for the empty ones. Okay, three eighths and five eighths. All right. What percentage is this rectangle shaded? One fifth. Right, one fifth is the fraction, but they ask for a percent. Watch out. Yeah, twenty percent. If there are five parts, a hundred divided by five is twenty. So every one of them is twenty percent. So that's 20%. What percent of the rectangle is not shaded? 80%. The rest of it. Yeah. So percent means you have to think of the whole thing being 100. Percent means divided by 100. Simplify. You know how to do this? Uh, would it be 1? Well, it would be 6 over 6 equals 1. Thank you. 6 over 6 equals 1. Guys, when you add, what do you do with the denominators? Don't. You just leave it the same, yeah. Yeah, as long as they're common. Thank you. That's an important thing to point out. We've not done the uncommon denominators yet, but we will. We'll, we'll, we'll do those soon. What about subtraction? What do you do to the denominators? Just leave them alone. Just keep it like it is. It's going to be five. It's one fifth. One fifth. Yep. Yeah. Multiply what? Yeah. Everything on top and everything on bottom. Yep. Three times one is three times three is nine. 40. Five times two is 10 times four, four is 40. That's it. Can you reduce that fraction? No, you can't. Three won't go into 40. That's the only thing that goes into nine. Now listen. Are you listening to me? On a test, if they just ask you to multiply it and they don't tell you to reduce it, I'll give you full credit if you don't reduce it. But it's always a good habit to learn to reduce it. In most of your math courses in the future, they'll ask you to simplify. And if you were taking an ACT test, they would always give reduced answers. So it's a good habit to reduce them. But I won't count off if they don't ask you to. If they just say, what's this product? And that one can't be reduced. So. B, yeah, that's one fifth. All right, over here, what are we doing? What's the operation? Adding. So what do you do to the denominator? Leave it alone. Eight over three. Eight over three, yep. Just add them up. Three, six, seven, eight. As long as the denominator is the same. Equals two -thirds. Yeah, two and two thirds. But I will not count it wrong if you just leave it like an improper fraction. That's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Unless they say write it as a mixed number. And then I count off a point. Yep. Yep. What do you do here? Yeah, 8 over 21. 8 over 21, yep. What about that last one? F, what's that going to be? Zero. Very good. You subtract anything from yourself, you always get 0, 0, 0. All right. You know when they have the 0 on top and the 5 on the bottom? Isn't it weird how you have to borrow to make that extent only to get pretty much the exact same answer as 5? If you're dividing, you mean, yeah. I mean, they're subtracting. Like, right here. For example, it would be like, so 100. Minus. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. You have to borrow one to subtract and get five. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys. We know how to find factors now, right? Yeah. All right. I'm not going to do all of that again now because of time. You know how to multiply, all right? Yeah. Very good. Eight over forty-five. Four times two times one is eight. Five times three times three is forty-five. You can go on your side. You don't have to do all that in your head. If you can, that's yeah. Yeah. Five times three is fifteen. 
and three, three times 15 is 45. Guys, also, it might be easier for you to multiply the threes first. Three times three is nine. Nine times five is 45. Thomas? Okay, <laughs> you got your hand up in advance. How many two-fifths are in one? Now, guys, the, re the reason they're asking you this question right now has to do with a word. You remember what the word is? Yes. Start yes, very good, Zach. It's reciprocal. They're asking you about reciprocals. What do you get when you multiply a number times its reciprocal? One, always. Tim, are you trying to ask me something? Okay, well, go ahead. You can, you can just shout it out. What? All right. It, it's not just two. It's five over two, which is two and a half. But what they're wanting you to see here in a problem like this, when they say, he, he said he would be here. Four seventh grade girls get out of class. I want them to meet me in room nine. Room nine. Got it, girls? Everybody understand? Room nine, right after class. Okay. How many two-fifths are in one? They're, they're saying you're going to have to multiply this by something to get one. And they're wanting to remember, what's the word again? Reciprocals. Reciprocals. What is the reciprocal of two-fifths? Five over two. When you multiply two-fifths times five over two, you always get one. Two times five is ten. Two times five is ten. That's one. If you just remember, when you multiply something by its reciprocal, you get one, then all you have to do here is say, that's got to be five halves. You with me? With me? Everybody with me? This can be kind of tricky if you don't remember some reciprocals. Reciprocals, reciprocals. Don't forget reciprocals. All right. Last page. That would be two Okay. The reciprocal? The last one you mean? Yeah, five over two. Mm-hmm. Write three and two thirds as an improper fraction. Three times three is nine plus two is eleven over three. That's it. Yes, Noah. All right, that's it. That's what you'll be tested over. If you can do that stuff yourself, did you hear what I said? If you can do it yourself, you'll be okay on the test, I think. Unless you make a careless mistake. Still say with me, guys, I haven't dismissed you yet. Listen, listen, listen. Hold on. Everybody with me? Good morning, pray. Father, I'm not sure what's happening as far as this meeting with the girls are concerned. It may be a controversy and pray it help the girls be determined to be honest, whatever's going on. And I pray that meeting would go well. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to make good decisions today. I pray you'd help these kids learn this stuff really well. Most of them already have. And I thank you for their attitude and their work ethic. So bless them for that. And I pray that when we come together on Tuesday and take this test, they will do really, really well. So help the ones who don't understand this as well. Help the ones who have more difficulty with math to make the time they need to make to practice and study and work on these things until they know what they're doing. So bless them really good. Help us the rest of this day to bring you glory and to live for you in a way that, that pleases you the most. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.